Hello, and welcome to the 2022 Advanced Colorado Procurement Expo and to the panel on small dollar purchases. Today, I'm joined by experts from state and local governments to share their insight into small dollar purchases. Now, small dollar purchases refer to um, the procurement of goods and services below certain thresholds where different rules apply. Small dollar purchases are generally considered to be a good opportunity for small businesses who may not have the resources to respond to large requests for proposal or other formal solicitation methods. Now I'm going to call on the panelists to introduce themselves. Brooke? Hello, my name is Brooke Dunn and I work for the Colorado Department of Transportation in the headquarters business office as the special programs manager. Dave? Hi everyone, I'm Dave Corman. I'm the Small Business Liaison Officer for the University of Colorado, working out of the system office downtown Denver. And Valerie. Hi everyone, my name is Valerie Scott. I'm the Purchasing and Contracts Manager at the City of Longmont, Colorado. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Now, before we move on to the questions, since this panel is focused on small dollar purchases, I'd like to take a brief minute to make sure all of our attendees are aware of the new statewide purchasing thresholds. Please note that these apply to state agencies, not local governments. On July 1st of this year, the state's newly increased purchasing thresholds went into effect. Now, the discretionary spend limit is $50,000 which means that a state agency can make a purchase for goods or services up to 50,000 from any vendor they want with no competition or solicitation required. Goods and services from 50,000 up to 250,000 can be solicited using a documented quote, which is a much simpler um, solicitation method uh, than the more formal types required for over 250,000, such as RFPs. As I said, those new limits apply to state agencies only. If you have any more questions about the state thresholds, please come visit me during the roundtables that start at 11 or at the State Purchasing and Contracts Booth office. Now let's hear from our panelists. Dave, please explain how your agency sources small dollar contracts. Well, we really don't put any restrictions on that we on our departments. We allow them as long as it's under the threshold that they can choose the, the supplier and they can use their purchasing fee card as long as it's under the $10,000 threshold and they can make the selection on that. Um, we typically do like uh, the supplier to be registered with the university prior, um, but that's just a, you know, I guess they don't necessarily have to be, but uh, it's one of the things that we find helpful for uh, other departments to utilize as well. Thank you. Valerie, um, could you please explain how your agency sources small dollar contracts? Yes, so at the city, we actually have a step in our small purchases. Um, there's a zero to $5,000 amount and then there's a $5,000 to $50,000 amount. So all of the purchases that don't exceed $5,000 uh, we leave it up to the individual departments and divisions to have discretion about which vendor they want to work with and to source. And we do think that's the sweet spot for working with small businesses as well, because there isn't any competition required. Um, from $5,000 to $50,000, we have a less formal required process of getting at least three quotes. Sometimes we post those, but it is considered to be an informal process versus like sealed bids for proposals. And just a side note, our thresholds are currently being uh, reviewed. So they could be a little bit higher than that come 2023. Oh, very interesting. I like that insider information. <laughs> um, Brooke, could you please explain how your agency sources small dollar contracts? So at CDOT, um, we are still at a $5,000 limit for um, purchases that can be made not on a purchase order. Um, so a lot of those, um, we tend to try and get our customers to use their commercial card to make those purchases. 
But at CDOT, we also do have storerooms throughout the state and all of our regions and areas um, that store a lot of uh, equipment for our maintenance workers and our guys that are out in the field that we all obviously encourage them to use those storerooms first so that we can kind of keep um, a little bit more control over what materials we have, what needs to be purchased. Um, so anything, anything over that has to go through a purchasing agent to get a purchase order put into place. Wonderful, thank you. Um, Valerie, the next question is for you. What should all businesses have when seeking procurement opportunities with your agency? So we don't require too much. We would ask for an updated and signed W-9. Um, so that's usually the first thing we request if it's a vendor we haven't done business with before. Um, we also tend to look towards the Secretary of State website to ensure that the business is in good standing and properly registered with the Secretary of State. Um, other than that, we don't really have any other requirements. We do look at some of the small business programs through City and County Denver and the state and CDOT when we have a requirement to work with small businesses. So um, we do use those as resources when we need to work with small businesses. Thank you. It does sound like you have some good resources there. Um, Brooke, what would you say that all businesses um, sh should have when seeking procurement opportunities with CDOT? So with CDOT, all of our solicitations are published on BidNet. So businesses would want to be sure that they're registered with BidNet if they plan to bid on any opportunities over $50,000. Um, again, kind of like Valerie with the city of Longmont, we want to be sure that the vendor is set up in our financial system, which at CDOT is SAP. So we are a little different than the rest of the state agencies um, who use a different financial system. Um, and then as far as any certifications to have um, currently on the procurement side of the house, the only certification recognized is the service disabled veteran owned small business certification. Um, this may change as the state evaluates the certifications that they are going to be recognizing. Um, and then other than that, um, you know, there's more information on our website that you can look at to really determine what you need to do to get set up to receive vendor payments through CDOT. Great, thank you. And finally, Dave, um, the same question. What should all businesses have when seeking procurement opportunities with your agency? Well, like, like Brooke and Valerie said, we're similar. We would first ask that the supplier have, be set up in our system. Uh, we'd have an updated W-9. Uh, unlike um, Brooke, though, we do, we're not on BidNet. I, I think Brooke said that you're BidNet. We have our own solicitation site, so um, we'd have asked them to review uh, cu.edu. Uh, if you go into the procurement service center, there's a link to that our our website that has all solicitations. But on small dollar um, solicitations, it's really what we encourage is boots on the ground by our suppliers um, going in and introducing yourself into campuses. We at the um, PSC are really not trying to um, you know manage that. I guess not say manage, but direct um, suppliers, it's, it's really up to the, each department to make that selection on the best, um, the best supplier that fits their, their need the best. So we try to encourage each supplier to go and, and really put those boots on the ground and, and do their research and, and work those relationships that they have on the campus. Yeah, that's, um, you really made a point there um, with research, which is something that I am always telling vendors that they need to do um, if they wanna work with state agencies, is that they need to research the organization or the agency that they wanna work with um, and really try to understand your mission so that they can you know, understand um, and find a place where they can fit in with their goods or services. So I think that's a really good point, thank you. Um, next question is for Brooke. For a small business who's just starting out, um, they haven't gotten a contract before with CDOT, um, 
and they're interested in small dollar contracts, uh, where would you recommend that they start? So I would recommend that they start with our website, which is www.codot.gov. And we really have some wonderful resources on there for you. Um, and again, we will have an exhibit table and our procurement staff will be attending the round tables today. Um, so please be sure to visit those. But we do have a very good um, business center portion of our website um, that gives information for small businesses, um, the procurement staff to contact at CDOT, um, if, should you have any questions. And, you know, back to what Dave said, you know, it really, especially with CDOT, we are, you know, pretty diverse in what we purchase. Um, so really just kind of doing your research and, you know, reaching out to those units within CDOT that you believe that your goods or services would be the best fit for. And you can find all of that information on our website, all the different divisions and units that we have that you could potentially work with. Perfect, thank you. And Valerie, um, same question. Someone is interested in working or getting their first contract um, with the city of Longmont. Uh, where do you recommend that they start in sourcing small dollar contracts? I will echo, uh, we are on the bid net system and sometimes we do have smaller opportunities posted there when we maybe haven't identified a good supplier to fulfill a need. So it's great to be registered there just to be notified of those occasional smaller opportunities that come up and to gain some familiarity with the city and the types of things we source. Um, our website is also great. We have a lot of diverse programs we offer from the city. Um, ranging from a municipal owned broadband utility to public safety to a lot of social and human services. So spending some time on our website and getting familiar with the different services we, we offer to our citizens. And then um, kind of back to Dave's comment, trying to make some connections with those divisions to introduce yourself and um, let our customers know that you're out there. Yes, definitely. I think the making contact and trying to build those relationships is so important. And obviously, um, the last few years, there have been fewer events to attend, but, um, you know, even attending virtual events where you can visit agencies, um, you know, at their booths or go to the roundtables and ask questions. I think these are great opportunities for, um, for businesses because, you know, the, the thing about the small dollar contracts. I know you mentioned, Valerie, that, you know, sometimes if, if maybe your office is having trouble identifying a vendor, you might still post them, but not necessarily. So the vendor who wants to sell that's, you know, who can really find a great niche for themselves and selling a smaller um, dollar good or services, good or service, sorry, really needs to know about that need, right? They need to know who would be buying that. Um, another good um, example of research that I think vendors could do would be, um, and I'm not sure how this works with BidNet because um, most state agencies use Colorado VSS. Um, and there you are able to search and look at historical solicitations so you can see what agencies have bought in the past. Do any of you know, does BidNet offer that same functionality? They do. They have um, a library where, you know, depending on the level of registration someone has, they can search awards, they can search um, bid tabs, potentially um, any information that the agencies using the system have chosen to post um, publicly after the solicitation period. Great. Thank you. So that's a, a really good um, resource. And then also um, just websites. I find that looking at a state agency, um, you know, or, and it's probably the same for the city and for CU, you can really drill down. You can look at the different divisions, the offices, the programs, you know, you can find if, if you sell a specific good or service, you can probably find a program that, that might need that. Um, does um, Brooke or Dave, do you have any other thoughts on research or um, opportunities places that vendors could, you know, um, do some more research or make more connections? Yeah, I would. I think there are, it's, it's hard. I mean, I mentioned before, but, you know, really getting in and getting into the campus and, and working those relationships because 
I think you know the, what we all have in common is there's there's so many different opportunities available out there, and it's really hard to identify one in particular without you know that um, that supplier going in there and, and having those relationships. And the other thing that I would say is um, try to leverage your relationships, uh, especially with us. I mean, we're we we have four campuses, um, and what I have found that a lot of suppliers maybe on one campus, maybe they're in Boulder, but they don't have, uh, or don't really think about leveraging those relationships for Colorado Springs, for example, and, and really find out because um, each campus is, as much as we are all under one umbrella, there's a lot of different opportunities uh, under each campus. So leveraging those, those and kind of learning about each institution, what they specialize in, um, you know, Boulder is more, you know, we have a lot of uh, research, but uh, Anschutz Medical Campus also has a ton of research too. So uh, there's, there's just a ton of opportunities and, and I can't stress enough it, just really pursue those uh, and research those opportunities and, and leverage those relationships. Thank you. And Brooke, I think you had something to add as well. Yeah, um, I was just going to say, you know, attending events exactly like this, um, pre-COVID, CDOT um, had an event called Day at the Dot, which is an event for vendors to come out and meet people from our programs, um, ask questions, see what their upcoming needs are. Um, we, unfortunately, since COVID, haven't had another one, but we are hoping to get back to that or some sort of industry day for CDOT. Um, but when that when something like that does get scheduled, it will be on our website to let um, vendors know that it's coming up. And other events, you know, like RMGPA, the Rocky Mountain Governmental Purchasing Association events um, that, you know, you can go to those and really get in front of people and network and meet a lot of potential buyers from a lot of different local government state agencies um, and that sort of thing. So that would be my recommendation. Perfect. Thank you. Love those agency um, events. So before we wrap up, um, I just want to offer our panelists um, the opportunity to share any closing thoughts you may have. I know um, you've hit on some important points already, so you may not have any, but I'd like to give everyone the chance to come off mute and um, just share any closing thoughts or last minute items you want the vendors that are in attendance to know about. I would just encourage all of the vendors to really, you know, go to the exhibit halls and attend the round tables, um, get in front of staff, ask question, any questions you have, and really just, you know, try and get as much information out of the people you have in front of you as you can during this event. It's really a great opportunity for you all. I would add in that um, you know, do not be afraid to you know, utilize some of the resources that we have. Um, we understand that there are some suppliers that may not have the resources to uh, really get uh, or haven't had the opportunity to be, do a large solicitation. And maybe they're a little bit intimidated by that process or the size of some of these solicitations. So um, feel free to reach out to resources at the university. We will try to help you um, um, and guide you wherever we can and, and help make that process uh, less painful, I guess. So. I would just add, um, when you have pain points as a supplier working with any of our entities, I wouldn't shy away from, you know, engaging in any opportunity to discuss those. Like if you're hitting a barrier or if something isn't making sense, um, just be in communication with with the different agencies you're working with so that we can hear hear that and hear your voice because sometimes we don't know that we're creating a barrier or a, a trial for our supplier community. I know that we've actually modified certain things in our process where it made sense when we could if it made the process a little bit more friendly. So I definitely encourage sharing your experiences and your feedback and um, taking, taking advantage of an opportunity to do that when it's presented to you. 
Thank you all. That was um, that was a lot of great information. Um, I really appreciate um, Brooke and Valerie and Dave uh, for joining me today um, and sharing their insights because whether you are doing business with the state or a local government or higher education, it is um, it's different, right? No matter um, which potential customer you are looking at. And so I would just like to echo their thoughts and um, encourage all of the attendees to not only visit all of the booths, but um, also come to the round tables. I will have one. They start at 11 and definitely check out the state purchasing and contracts office booth for some general information on doing business with the state. And with that, we are done and thank you for your time.